Hey everyone, this is Joe from BitBang, and this is a video that's a part of a bigger video series of the TKO, and its features, its functionalities. But in this video in particular, I'm gonna be demonstrating the, the turbo function, the shift function, uh, the lock function, the, the stick select, or the, I guess, LSDPRS switching function, and just generic inputs that you can see uh, on the laptop and on the app. And it's a little different from the other videos because you can see that I have a computer over here, the stick here, and the app here. So it's kind of hard to see. Uh, I'm going to walk through and explain everything that you're expected to see. You could also look back to other videos to get a better idea of the menu. Uh, but I feel like it's better than, than doing different video input captures, um, like kind of computer editing software, because I kind of want to let you see what I'm actually doing rather than a bunch of screens that are kind of related to each other. If it makes any sense. So right now I'm connected to the TKO in this stick. The app's open and connected, and I have Gamepad Tester um, on the computer. And I have the TKO right now uh, acted, ang acting as an X input controller. So if you see on the screen, if you can't see the screen, it says Xbox controller, Xbox 360 controller, X input standard gamepad. That just means that this is an Xbox gamepad that'll work on your PC. It won't work on Xbox 360 because that's encrypted and the TKO cannot do encrypted protocols or controlling an emulation. Only ones that are not protected like Nintendo Switch or X input or D input or things like that. Um, just the ones that are, that are not protected by any company. Uh, so with that being said, if you if you see here, let's get this going here. You see that I have all my button inputs being pressed, right? And for some reason, 4K acts like right mouse click on my computer for this. So I'm gonna go ahead very quickly uh, change it just so it's not bugging us. Thanks, thank Windows for that one, right? All right, we're good now. So you'll see that I could press 1P, 2P, 3P, 4P, right? 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, and it's pretty fast. I mean, you can do, I mean, you can see that there's nearly no lag. I mean, not much that you can really feel in a game anyway, whether the game is frame buffered or not, right? So it's pretty fast. Um, on contrary though, when you go to the test dashboard on a super slow tablet, it's like a s two seconds. If it's gonna be on, let's say, a current gen smartphone, it's like a second, maybe half a second. So if you notice, I press 1P here, it just lit up. You see how it releases? It's a little laggy. So that, that shows that the controller itself is not laggy to USB, it's just that the connection through Bluetooth on the test dashboard is laggy. So it doesn't affect your gameplay, it only shows you um, a little slower on the test dashboard based on your device. Uh, it, it doesn't mean it's not useless, it just means that you can't see things very fast. But if you're first wiring this up and you're like, well, did I really wire up 4K that I think it should be? And you didn't have this wired up, you can just look on your app and say, oh yeah, it is 4K, so I'm, I'm okay. Or, you know, this is 1, 1K. In one case, up there, you're like, all right, so I'm, I'm good. And you just go through each input and, and see how it goes. Um, so that was more to show you how that is. Now, for the stick mode, um, on, on this AFS stick, I have um, a switch here that goes between the two. So right now I'm on DP. If I go to LS, it shows right here LS. If I move this around, you'll see the left stick works as expected on Gamepad Tester. If I go to... DP, there's the D-pad. If I go to RS, there's the right stick. So that goes to show you that the stick mode select or the direction mode select, whatever you want to call it, it's working appropriately and it gets reported on the test dashboard. Um, the turbo button, okay? So I have a turbo button wired up here. So if you look here, here's the button, right? If you want to make it turbo, just hold the, the button you want to be turboed and the Turbo, turbo abo buttons are all of your, your P's and your K's, right? Because I don't know why you'd want to maybe turbo your start button other than doing weird things like unlocking 
Strange Secrets on Bomberman 64 or whatever cheat codes you know from your past childhood. But here, you press 1P, you just tap uh, turbo, and you, you can see it, it's like, it's spazzing, right? It doesn't affect anything else. It's solid, right? But this one is still being turboed. If you hold this one and you press turbo, same thing, right? And you can turbo all of them. They could all be turboed. And I'm going to do that just to show you. So that's turboed. That's turboed. That's turboed. That one. That one. And that one. Okay. And if I press all of them, you're going to see they're all spazzing. But what's interesting is that they're all being pressed at the same time and then off the same time. At the same time and off the same time. And that was intentional because I noticed that some turbo features on some boards, they don't, they don't seem to be synchronous. I'm going to call this synchronous turbo because they all press together. So that means that if you want to spam, let's say like, I don't know, in some arcade game, you want to press one P and, uh, or one, one P and two P together. And for some reason, when you do those together, it does like a special move, right? You won't get that if you're doing turbo like this, right? They got to be in sync. So I purposely programmed this to be in sync. Um, so again, to, to get rid of turbo, just go through each button, press it, hold the button you want, press turbo, hold the button you want, press turbo, 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 and turbo. So now they're all solid, right? And turbo is forgotten on power up. It does not get retained. It, it's always, when you start a new game, it gets turboed. Uh, I didn't think it made sense to memorize the turbo function. That'd probably really get annoying pretty fast. Um, so that's turbo. Uh, shift, right? So if you notice on this stick, I have eight buttons. But the way I have it wired is I have uh, three buttons here. It goes shift, uh, then turbo, and actually nothing. I don't have anything assigned to this, this button. Uh, then I have the, the stick select switch. I have USB. I have the lockout switch, which, which I'll get to. Then L3, R3, and TP key, which actually doesn't work for X input, right? Um, and actually anything that doesn't work for the protocol that you're on or the controller emulation that you're on, it'll be grayed out. So TP key, uh, TPK just does not work at all in X input. So if you were to try to press it, it doesn't do anything, right? Because it's not compatible with X input. Uh, but I don't have any start, select, um, or home buttons. So what do I do, right? So I put a switch, mo uh, a shift modifier on here. If you press this button, you'll see shift turns on. And the way it works is that I have 1P, 2P, 3P as start, select, and home for X input. And then I have, I think I have L3, R3, and TP key. So if I press, let's say, um, so here is L3, right? I'm going to go press 1K. But if I, if I press shift, in 1K, it actually presses L3. So I don't really need to have these buttons here at all. I can just omit them from my stick, and I can have kind of a like a, a minimalist stick um, if you don't want to have too many buttons, or you have a case that you don't want to drill too many holes in, or you don't have too many features, or you want to put other features in. I made it so it's kind of like a keyboard. It has a, switch, a shift modifier, and you can do it that way. So if you hold shift, right, for 1P, let's see here. 1P, right? That's going to be start. That's going to be select. And that's home. All right. Of course, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting up my, my, uh, my steam engine here. Let me go ahead and, and back it out of this. Okay, so that's, that's now powered down for that steam I need to head on this computer. It's, it's configured kind of strange when you hit the home button on this computer. Um, so I'm not going to hit home again, but you get the idea. 1P, uh, 2P, and then 3P is, if you hold shift down right here, it's going to be a start, select, and then home. Again, I'm not going to press it because it's kind of strangely set on this computer. Now, if you want to do uh, L3, and again, I have L3 here on the top, right? And that's, that's this button right here. See right there? So if I hit 1K, but instead I hit shift, then 1K, I actually hit L3, and then shift uh, 2K is R3, and then shift 
3K is um, is nothing, which is why it's going to 3K instead and not going to some TP key or TPK kind of button press, right? Because again, TPK does not work on Xbox um, or X, X input for PC. Uh, you might you might have noticed that if I hit, um, let's say, Shift, right? And then 1K, we just start. If you look to the left of me, right? These two are, are on. Shift and 1P is on, but not start. That was intentional. I didn't, I kind of went back and forth in my head. Should I have it showing the real button input? Should I not? In the end, I wanted this to be more like a mechanical test because this test dashboard is more useful to make sure the TKO is sensing the button being pushed, not the function being output to the console. So it's more like a relationship between the app and the TKO, not the console and the TKO. So everything you press here, it's going to be reflected on more of the buttons one at a time. So don't don't expect Shift and and One P to press Start on here. It'll press Start here, but it won't press Start over there. Okay. Uh, so we covered that. The lock button. Um, tr traditionally, the way lock buttons work or lock switches work is that you would go ahead and take a ground signal. You'd wire it into a switch. And you would take the output of that switch and then connect the grounds to the buttons that you want to lock. Basically, just cutting off the ground. That's it. This is a bit inverted where you want to give a ground to the lock signal to lock it. So it's the opposite. Same idea. Um, but you don't have to do any kind of ground wiring. If you're experienced, this is probably not a big deal unless you want to make a nice looking, looking stick and you want to do a lot of uh, nice wiring uh, presentation. But people who don't know too much about the wiring but are getting started, it's a nice feature, I think. Um, I can go ahead and, and press lock here, right? Now I'm locking all the buttons that would kind of get you disqualified from a tournament. So you can't press start, right? So my start button is actually uh, here, right? If I hit shift, well, it doesn't, it, it tries to press start, but it can't. But it won't press 1P. It'll just say can't press start, right? So if I let go of shift and press it, can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. But once I hit lock, uh, switch to be off, now I can do it again, see? Okay. Uh, that covers it for all of the different kind of modifiers and the buttons. Uh, if I go to the actual ports on this, um, you do have all of your, I'm going to go closer and just focus it. You got all of your terminal blocks here as you would find them for all your button inputs. Uh, the shift is only accessible through here. Um, and the antagonist, I'll get into the video, is only accessible through here. There's no actual header for it. Um, directions are like a directional inputs, like a left, right, up, and down through the header, uh, through the Odin port, if you're going to use an Odin, like this. And it can be accessed through the 20-pin header. Um, all the home buttons, 1P, uh, or the P's and the K's here. Same thing here. And the LSDP RS is where you'd expect to find it, which is right here. If you notice, it's a it's a JST connection. And usually they have these, um, it's more like, more like this, these kind of right angle kind of headers. I did it because it just, in my opinion, looks better. I'm trying to push to a different adoption. I'm going to include a little converter cable. So if you have an existing setup, don't worry about it. It's not going to mess you up. Just plug it in and you're good to go. Um, other than that, you can rewire it. Here's the lock port. Just two pins. Just plug it in and that's it. And I believe that's it, except for here. This is the, the TPK L3 R3. That's this header, just like you'd expect in, in other boards. Uh, same thing here for the turbo button, the turbo key. I didn't demonstrate in this video the turbo LED, but just connect an LED as shown in the manual. And as it's pressing, right, it'll just show you how it's flickering, or it'll just be steady on. Depends on your LED if it's got like filtering on it or not. And um, that's pretty. That's pretty much it for for all the inputs on that. Don't believe I'm missing anything there. Um, I do want to very quickly just go into the consoles since it's 
somewhat related. If I go into the main menu, again, this tab is a little slow. Uh, if I go into main menu and I go to supported consoles, right, I'm on Xbox input, right? And you'll see it says Xbox controller. But this, the way this is made is that there's an ESP32 with two cores. One core has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the RGB LEDs. The other core is grabbing all of these inputs and handling um, this communication here, and these ports here, except for the RGB, um, and communicating with another chip in here. It's a small little STM32 port. Again, when the double KO was being made, it was made for an STM32. It was a lot of porting to do for the modules, but for the actual protocol emulation, it was too much porting. So I decided to just put it into a small little STM32 chip and the second core or the first core, however you want to think about it, talks to that chip and that's completely independent. It handles USB, so it talks to this. So I'm, I call that, I call the ESP32 section the communication engine and I call the STM that's embedded in here, I call it the emulation engine. So there's two firmwares essentially, one for communications and one for communications internally and then one for externally, which is the emulation engine, all right? So when you go ahead and choose your console, right? You just press it, it just does it for you, right? And you'll notice it says STM32 custom human interface. It's, it's, not, it's not wrong, that's what that is for the USB code in the STM32, but it is the input. So if you plugged it in somewhere else, it would be recognized as the input. Um, and actually, if you take the same code and you put it on to a different STM32, it would say the input or it'd say whatever thing I, I, I took the I took all those bytes from for the protocol. Same thing with this one. Um, it'll say STM32 custom, custom human interface, different vendor ID, different product ID. And if you notice, it's got a lot more buttons here. Um, those buttons are not currently accessible. If you want them accessible, I can try to think of an idea on how to do it through communication port, but right now they're not accessible. Um, I think they are maybe with some shift key modifiers. I'll put them in the manual, so don't worry about that. Um, same thing with Nintendo Switch. It doesn't say Switch. It just says a different vendor ID and a different product ID, but it definitely is Nintendo Switch. If you plug it into a Switch, it'll just work. Um, the info button here will tell you what each protocol can or can't do. Again, this can't do encrypted protocols, it can't do um, PS4 or PS5 without any kind of authentication help that you might have seen in, in other boards. I don't have any plans for that right now. I'm concentrating more on the, the platform, and then when this is kind of fleshed out, then I'll work on figuring out how to authenticate or, or bypass certain things. Um, more protocols will be added as we go along. Just let me know what you think you might want, or I'll, I'll just keep kind of going forward and, and doing more protocols. Um, again, X input does not work on 360, it's encrypted. D input is for PC only. Generic again, it's for PC only. Nintendo Switch, just by chance, works on PC. It really is supposed to be equal for Nintendo Switch. It doesn't do Nintendo Switch Lite, it's only Switch. So mind you of that. And PS3 just works on all regular PS3, the slim PS3, or whatever variants there. It'll just work for that one. If it doesn't, please let me know, because then I'll put a, a firmware update out there for that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask in the comments section. And uh, thanks for watching.